Yes, madam. Okay. Shall I start the class, Lalma? Only you are there, I guess. Yes, madam. We start now. Okay. So good afternoon. Uh, today we are going to see about the test of sunflower and safflower. So we know that for over the last few decades, these two crops gained a lot of importance uh, for as their uh, edible oil and also they are used as a food colorant. But there are many pests that are hindrance to their quantity and also quality of this crop. So now let's see what are all the pests that damage these two crops. So. The important pests that are known to uh, damage the uh, sunflower are uh, tobacco caterpillar, head borer, bihar hairy caterpillar, jacets, thrips, green semilupa, cabbage semilupa, cutworm, termite, whitefly, and army worm. And uh, in these uh, pests, these uh, head borer, bihar hairy caterpillar, cabbage semilupa, and cutworm. These four are the most important pests that are known to damage uh, the sunflower in South India. So first, let's see about the uh, head or capsulum borer, that is Helicoverpa armigera, that belongs to the family uh, Noctidae and order Lepidoptera. So here, what happens is this uh, young larvae, they are known to feed on the leaves for some time, and uh, these will attack the flower head, internal tissues will be completely eaten and they are completely followed out. And also while feeding the caterpillar, these, uh, these are known to thrust its head inside, leaving the rest of the body outside. And they are also known to form, uh, they are also known to bore uh, with uh, round holes. And they are also uh, feed on leaves, shoots, and also on buds. So these are the damage symptoms of this capsule border. So next is the biology of this uh, pest. So when these uh, eggs are laid, they will be spherical, creamy, white in color, and they also lay singly. And uh, after two to five days, the larva will hatch out, and these newly hatched larva will be translucent and also yellowish white in color, and they will be having faint yellowish orange longitudinal lines and the fully grown larva they will be having variable coloration and the pattern may be in green straw yellow and also in pinkish to reddish brown in color and sometimes you can also observe black color or fully grown caterpillar and they also have a broken stripe along each side of their body and there will be one line on the dorsal side of the body and after that they are also known to pupate in the soil, leaf, pod, or on the crop debris, and the pupa will be brown in color. So after a week, these uh, pupa, these pupa, uh, the, the adults will emerge from the pupa, and these adults will be light pale, uh, brownish yellow in color, and uh, they also will be having olive green to pale brown colored uh, foveing, and in the foveing, there there are also circular spot in the center. And uh, when you see the hind wings, the hind wings will be pale, uh, smoky white in color, as you see here, with a broad blackish outer margin. So this is the peculiar character of this uh, Helicavapa amigera. So next is the management of this crop. So we have to intercrop uh, the sunflower with uh, green gram, 
black bran brown net and also soya bean and in order to monitor the activity of the moat you also have to plant maize or jowa around the sun field you can also uh, grow uh, marigold as trap crop and it should be like a 50 plants per acre you can also set up pheromone trap at the rate of 4 uh, per acre and uh, light trap at the rate of 1 per 5 acre and also it is very much important to conserve the natural enemies in the field itself like uh, predators like coccinellids is coccinellids and chrysoperla are known to be prevalent in the uh, sunflower sunflower field and uh, you can also release this chrysoperla at the rate of one larvae per head then when uh, then in a parasitoid you can uh, release trichogramma species at the rate of 20000 per acre then you know that helicover parmigera uh, nuclear polyhedrosis virus is also very much effective uh, for this uh, pest so you can also use this uh, helicover parmigera in combination with the bacillus thuringiensis so uh, helicover parmigera should be like uh, 250 larva equivalent and uh, bt should be around uh, 0.5 kg per hectare then you can also spray uh, uh, this uh, ha and pv uh, along with uh, jaggery then uh, sandalwood and tea pod so you have to prepare along with this ha and pv then uh, before egg laying you can also spray 5% of uh, neem seed kernel extract so next important pest is bihar hairy caterpillar that is pilosoma obliqua that belongs to the family arctidae and the order lepidoptera so in this uh, the egg larva it will feed gregariously on the under surface of the leaves so when this uh, feeding becomes severe the whole crop is known to be defoliated uh, and also when this uh, larvae Uh, feed that particular portion will become dried up so drying up of this uh, infected leaf is also one of the main symptom of this pest so next is the biology of the pest so the female it will uh, lay eggs in masses on the lower surface of the uh, leaf and after 3 to 4 days the larva will come out and this larva will be completely hairy and also they are very much gregarious in their early insta stage that is uh, up to 14 days after egg hatch so later on that is after 14 days these larva are known to disperse and the fully grown larva will be 5 cm long and this uh, larva they will be pale uh, yellow colored with uh, dark yellow hairs all over their body so after 14 to 21 days they are known to pupate in the soil uh, for the about a uh, depth of 10 to 20 cm so after that the adult will emerge and this adult will be having uh, reddish black spots on their pinkish wings on both the sides and also the whole life cycle will take about only 38 days if the environment is con conducive that is the conducive temperature of this pest is 30 degree celsius so next is the vanishment aspect of this uh, bihar hairy caterpillar so what you have to do is you have to use well root and mayonnaise then you can also intercrop with uh, pgnp at a row ratio of 2 is to 1 which is a very effective method in reducing this uh, insect attack then the egg masses and also the first and second instar larvae can be manually collected and they can be destroyed and when you come to biological control uh, it is very much important to conserve the parasite and par predators in the field itself so you have to maintain ecological engineering so uh, parasite like uh, shams obtuses then uh, meteoris uh, clycomerictis then predators like chrysoperla and coccinellid should be maintained in the field then you have to spray 5% of neem seed uh, seed kernel extract at the rate of 5 kg per acre that is preferably in the evening since uh, they are known to feed mostly in the night time so for chemical control you can spray cypermethin uh, 10% uh, uh, 
uh, emulsifiable concentrate at uh, 260 to 300 ml per acre, which is diluted in 200 to 260 liter of water. Now you can also use uh, quinol falls, then profenophores also you can use. So next is another important uh, pest which we studied in uh, many other crops too, that is uh, tobacco caterpillar, uh, Sporotra lictula, which belongs to the family Noctidae and order Lepidotra. So here, uh, the first instar larva, they are known to feed gregariously on a single leaf and also on the underside of the leaf. And uh, when these uh, larvae feed on these uh, leaves gregariously, you can see that the leaves will appear like a mesh. And the fully grown larva will also feed uh, the leaves voraciously. And after that, you can see only the petiole on and stalk left in the plant. And also, it is being reported that uh, these pests are known to damage these crops uh, in the leaves, flower beds, and they also affect the capitulum whenever there is severe outbreak of this pest. So the main uh, symptom is defoliation. At first, it will be skeletonization, then it will be defoliation. So when it comes to biology, so you know that this uh, uh, pest is widespread in India. That is, you can see this pest both in the tropical as well as the subtropical parts of the world. And uh, besides the sunflower, they are also known to affect tobacco, cotton, castor, groundnut, tomato, cabbage, and also various other uh, vegetables and cruciferous crops. So if you see the egg, it will be, they will be laying, the females will be laying the eggs under the surface of the leaves and also in a mass. So that is the main difference of this uh, Spodotra and Helicoverpa. In Helicoverpa, they will lay the eggs singly only. Here, it will be in mass. And after laying these eggs, they will cover these uh, eggs with brown hairs. And uh, a single female, they can lay about uh, 500 to 600 eggs in their lifetime. And after four to five days, the larva will emerge. And this larva, larva will emerge. And the grown-up larva, it will be very much stout and cylindrical. And uh, their body will be pale greenish in color. And you can also see many dark markings on their body. And uh, some, uh, some pest, I mean, some species, they will be having transfers and longitudinal. Some population, they will be having transfers and uh, longitudinal gray and yellow bands. Whereas others will be having rows of dark spots on the upper side of their body. So, uh, it feeds during night time. We know that as it is uh, today, they will be active during the night time. And uh, on an average, the larval period will be about uh, two to three weeks. So after uh, two to three weeks, they, they will pupate. That too, in the soil or in the leaf debris. If it is in the soil, it will be like at, the, at a depth of five centimeter. And after six to seven, the adults will emerge. So these adults will also be very much stout and they are dark in color. So you can observe here, they will be dark in color and they will be having wavy white markings on the four wings. And the hind wings will be white in color and they will be having uh, brown color at the margin. And the total life cycle will be completed within 30 to 40 days based on their conducive environment. So next is the management. So, uh, like uh, Helicoverpa and we have hairy caterpillar, here also you have to collect the egg masses. Then, uh, I mean, like uh, we have hairy caterpillar, you have to collect the egg mass and then you have to also collect the first and second insta gregarious larvae and you have to destroy it. Then you have to intercrop the sunflower EGMP. And uh, as in any other raw pest, here also you have to conserve the natural enemy, whether it is parasitoid or predators. Some of the parasitoid that are known to be effective against this pest is trichogramma evanescens, uh, then larval parasitoid like Aphentellus or Prodinate, Potassium, Peribe, then uh, predatory uh, sting bugs, Cantheconidia fursillata, 
then uh, pupil parasitoid like uh, tetrastrichus aeri, uh, metopia species, and uh, trichospilus pupil. So these are the important parasites, whereas uh, predators like spiders, chrysocarla, predatory bugs, then insectivorous birds can also be conserved in the field by encouraging them. So next, uh, you can also go for spraying of 5% neem seed kernel at 5 kg per acre. So if you notice in sunflower, you can see that uh, most of the uh, pests will be from the Moctuday family. And uh, you can also spray Spodotra uh, Litura NPV at uh, 100 larval equivalent per acre. And uh, it will be more effective if you use this uh, SLNPV in combination with 0.2 percentage of this uh, neem seed kernel extract. And uh, you can also apply uh, bacterial formulations like uh, Bacillus thuringiensis and radius series for the management of this pest. And uh, if it uh, exceeds, then you have to go for uh, control measures. That is, you have to use chemicals like uh, dichlorovo 76% day humidifiable concentrate at the rate of 250 ml per acre. And you have to dilute this in 200 to 400 liter of water. So next it is uh, cutworm that is agrotis ypsilon. Here the damage symptom will be like, here also you know that they will be more active and they will feed in, at the night itself. So the newly hatched uh, larva, uh, it will start feeding on the leaves and it will form small irregular holes. So early, uh, early instar is not of that much uh, uh, economic significance, but once the larvae becomes larger, they will completely cut the plant through the stalks. So this will cause plants to wilt and eventually the plants will die. So you can observe that this particular larger larvae will result in severe stand reductions. And also in order to uh, feed themselves at uh, daytime, what they will do is they will drag away the uh, cut plants under soil clothes or into the small holes in the soil and they will feed it during the daylight hours. And uh, it is uh, reported that these cut worms can uh, destroy as much as 75% of a crop in a field. So next is the biology of this pest. The eggs that are laid will be cream colored and it will be globular that is round and they are also laid in batches. It will be laid in uh, leaves or uh, stems of their alternate holes or in other crop plants and also on litters. So a single female, they can lay up to 1800 eggs and uh, within two to nine days, the eggs will be hatching and you can observe a brownish larvae uh, with a draw, broad pale grey band midline in the body you can uh, observe and also there will be black stripe laterally and you can also observe greyish green at the sides of this body and the head capsule it will be black in color with uh, two white spots. It is also a peculiar character of this uh, cut one larvae. So the fully grown larvae it will be about uh, 45 mm in length. So as I said, this will feed on uh, feed on foliage at night time, and uh, they will uh, hide in soil or in debris during the daytime. So after after that, the larva they will pupate, and the pupation will also takes place in the soil. And uh, the pup the pupa it will be very much uh, dark in color. And after that, the adults will emerge and this adult will be having a wing span of 40 to 55 mm uh, span. And um, their four wings, it will be grayish in color and they will be also have this uh, grayish uh, four wing, they will be having dark brownish mark, black markings. And uh, when you observe the hind wings, it will be pearly in color and they will be having dark fringes in the hind wings. So it will take around uh, 30 days to complete their one life cycle. So for management, uh, you can sow this uh, sunflower seeds on ridges so that they cannot reach to the uh, seedling. 
and uh, for biological control you can release this trichogramma chylonis at the rate of 20000 per acre then you have to conserve whatever natural enemies is uh, present in the field and the parasitoid uh, potasia uh, meteororus and uh, campylestis these species and also the predators brown beetle are going to be effective to um, maintain this pest in the field so next it is green semi lupa so you might have uh, known this uh, pest in soya bean it is a Uh, important uh, and major pest in soya bean so the uh, scientific name it is tyzenoflusia oricalcia it also belongs to the family noctidae and order lepidoptera so damage symptom is that uh, the early instar they are known to feed on the chlorophyll of the tender leaves and uh, they will form a transparent leaf spots on the places where they feed so after that after the after they are uh, somewhat grown they are known to feed from the leaf margin and they will completely defoliate the plant leaving only the mid ribs so when you take uh, when you see the biology the eggs they will uh, lay greenish white eggs so they will also lay the eggs singly only and also on the under surface of the leaves and uh, once the larvae hatches it will be green in color and they will be having a thin white lateral line and also there will be two white lines on the back so here you can i mean you can only see the side portion so you can hear uh, see the white lines so likewise there will be uh, white lines on the back also and uh, another thing is that their posterior end it will be swollen whereas their anterior side will uh, tap on the leaf surface and uh, and then they will pupate and this pupation it will take place in the white transparent silken cocoons in uh, leaf litter or in the hog crop depths and after pupation they will within a week they will uh, the adult will emerge and this adult it will be dark brownish mod and they will be having a golden colored triangle they will be having golden color triangle with a tuft of hair on thoracic region so you can hear you can see here they are having a tuft of hair on the thoracic region and here you can observe a triangle of mark and the total life cycle it will take about 30 days so next is the management so now uh, here they have given that mechanical control so you have to uh, practice some common mechanical practice so that i will discuss uh, uh, later so the biological control you have to conserve the natural enemies which are known to be effective for this pest like uh, egg parasite like trichogramma species then uh, larval parasite like uh, potasia aphelintis Uh, Rufiquerus, then Aphentelus, Af Af Africanus, then Euplectrus, then Campylestis, Exorista, Copidosoma, then Dysophrus, then Enicospilus. So these are the parasitoids that are known to be that are to be conserved in the field. Then the predators like uh, lady, ladybird beetle, Rhizoperla mantis, and spiders can also be. uh concert then some of the birds are also known to predate these uh, insect like uh, ash wren then tailor bird green leaf rabbler then uh, black drum bow then also house sparrow then uh, for uh, chemical control you can spray this uh, dichlorous uh, 76% bleach so next is another uh, crop that is uh, cabbage uh, semi lupo This is this is also known to affect the cruciferous uh, uh, crops also. So the scientific name it is Chrysoplusia, uh, Chrysoplusia ni, and uh, it belongs to the family Noctidae and order Lepidoptera. So initially they are known to feed on the clover. fill and uh, tender leaves as uh, green semi lupa and uh, later the, uh, the larva will feed from the leaf margin and at last they will defoliate and only you can observe the midrips in the standing crop 
So next is the biology. So the female. Hello. The female egg, uh, it is a greenish white uh, spherical uh, sculptured eggs that do singly on the undersurface of the sun. And uh, the MOS larva, it will be slender, that is very tiny, and uh, attenuated antennae. And uh, the fully grown larva, it will. <coughs> So the fully grown larva, it measures about 33 mm. And also you, you can observe here, the larva will be green in color and they will be also having wavy white lines and also broader lateral white stripes. So after that, they will pupate that to under the surface of the leaves and from that the adult will emerge and this adult will be brown in color and they will be having uh, white color wavy marking, markings and also you can observe uh, more slender uh, white marks on the forebrains and the total life cycle it will take about one month. So next is the management. You can uh, you can adopt the, uh, the common mechanical and uh, cultural practice as in other uh, not today that we practiced. So next is the sucking pens that is white fly, Demisia tabasi, that belongs to the family Alluroidae and the order Hemiptera. So we have seen uh, about this pest in uh, many other uh, crops too. So you know that uh, these uh, pests are known to suck the sap from the leaves and uh, they also excrete the excrete honeydew from their anus. And uh, these honeydew later on will uh, develop into uh, black sooty mold fungus. And these black sooty mold fungus will uh, hinder the photosynthetic activity of the leaves. So since the photosynthetic activity is uh, hindered, what happens is the, the leaves, the plants will uh, be stunted. They will, in uh, severe condition, the whole plant will dry and they will wilt. And uh, so as I said, under very heavy uh, infestation, they will lose the vigor and, uh, and also the damage is manifested under the severe moisture stress. So it includes, uh, if there is more moisture content, then the, the plants will obviously die. That is, it will uh, will and also there will be failure to set the seeds. So you know that these seeds of these uh, sunflower is being used as a uh, diet snack by uh, it is recommended by the doctors for uh, weight loss also so next is uh, biology so in biology uh, the egg it will be pear shaped and uh, light yellowish green color so you know that the egg will be stopped and uh, from the eggs the nymphs will emerge <clears throat> the nymphs will emerge and the limbs will be oval, uh, scale-like, and also they will get remain attached to the leaf surface. And after that, the adults they will be they will be tiny. One second. <coughs> they will be tiny, and uh, the the uh, they will be having yellowish body, and their wings it will be coated with milk white maxi surface. So next is the management. Uh, so for management, you can intercrop the sunflower with uh, ground net at the ratio of uh, 1 is to 4, which will be very effective in control of this uh, white fly. Then uh, mechanical control, not this one. That is in mechanical control, you can use a uh, yellow sticky trap, then um, biological control, you can uh, you can conserve the natural enemies, then uh, you can go for the uh, spraying of this neem product, 5% neem oil before the egg laying, uh, then, uh, then you can also spray, that is imidacloprid, which is a neonicotinoid group, 
uh, you can uh, go for C treatment with this uh, particular chemical, which is having active ingredients of uh, forty-eight percent eight FS at uh, five to nine mL per kg. See, and uh, imidacloprid seventy percent WS seven mL per kg. See, and uh, after C treatment, you can go for spraying. Then uh, spraying this imidacloprid at the rate of uh, 17.8 percent SL at uh, 40 mL per acre, which is diluted in 200 liter of water. And you can also use malathion as as spray. So next is another uh, uh, sucking pet that is Jasip ambrasca. So. This also we have learnt in many other crops also. So this also will suck the uh, sap from the leaves. So once it sucks the sap, that is, it will suck the sap from the under surface of the leaves only. So when it sucks the sap, uh, the plant will be stunted, and you can observe that the leaves will be yellowing. Then it will be cupped and also wrinkled. And uh, later on, you can also observe that the leaf margin will be. Uh, Burn, you can observe burned appearance at the leaf margins. Uh, so you know that we have seen in uh, uh, paddy crop also that is there will be hopper, hopper burns in the one if this if this pest attacks the field. So next is the biology of the pest. <coughs> so biology of the pest. The adult it will be greenish yellow in color and there will be and they will be wedge in shape. And uh, as you can observe here, they will be having a pair of black spot and vertex, and also a black spot on each of the four wings. And uh, the peculiar character of the cicadae, you know that they will walk diagonally. And uh, these uh, adults, they are known to lay eggs inside the leaf way uh, in the parent chymatis tissue. So, on an average, as a indivi an individual female can lay up to 10 to 15 uh, eggs, and the incubation period it will be from 4, 4 to 11 days. After that, the nymphs will emerge and the nymphs will also be greenish yellow in color. So, based on the climate, based on their conducive temperature, the days will vary. So, in summer, it will uh, take about uh, the nymphal period will be about seven days. Whereas in winter, it will be about uh, 21 days. So the metabolic activity is more uh, during summer season. So adult, as I said, it will be greenish, yellow, it will be wedge shape and uh, everything. So here also the adult, it will survive for about five weeks in summer and seven weeks in winter. So based on the climate, everything, uh, the survival rate also, it increases. That's why climate change plays a very important role in the, in the uh, pest occurrence and also incidence. So uh, next is uh, management. <coughs> so uh, cultural practice, you can go for closer spacing. Then you can you have to apply adequate amount of nitrogen, only adequate amount, it should not be excess and also it should not be less. And uh, you can go for mixed cropping of sunflower with coffee. Then, uh, then you can go for uh, intercropping the sunflower with uh, groundnut in at the ratio of one is to four. So next is the uh, biological control. So you have to conserve the uh, coccinella, that is predators like uh, Brumus, Sercheralis, Tylophorus, Coccinella, Septum punctata, Menochylus, Sex maculata, and the Stymless nubilis. So, uh, predatory ligate, that is Geochorus tricolor and Anthocorus, you have to you, you have to consult. Then other predator, that is mantids, like Eumantisa, then uh, Caragrion, then Utnura, Rolicopus, then uh, Terevia. This also you have to consult. Other predator is Chrysoperma. So, next is chemical control. For chemical control, you can use uh, the same neonicotinoid uh, insecticide as we used in the uh, 
sorry, uh, white fly. That is, you can use imidacloprid or you can also use thymethoxam. So some of the common cultural practice, what you have to uh, adopt is uh, that uh, first, let's see about uh, this common cultural uh, practices. During sowing or seedling stage, seeding stage, that is first you have to apply balanced dose of NPK fertilizer. Then you have to only use healthy, clean, quality, certified and weed free seeds. You have to go for timely sowing with, uh, with recommended spacing. Then you have to use uh, tolerant or resistant varieties. Then uh, you can go for sowing of this uh, track crops like mangrove for helicover parmigiana at the rate of 50 plants per acre. And uh, some of the common mechanical practice that you can uh, uh, adopt is uh, collection and destruction of plant debris, then use of pheromone traps at the rate of four to five traps per acre, then uh, setup of these uh, light traps at one trap per acre, then uh, yellow sticky traps for this white place for uh, about four to five traps per acre. And these yellow sticky traps, it will be coated with grease or sticky oily material. So once it comes in contact, it will get stick to this surface. So next it is, uh, you have to collect and destroy. <coughs> next is you have to collect and destroy the egg masses of uh, larvae. And also you have to collect the damaged uh, uh, portions. So during uh, vegetative stage, the common cultural practices that you have to adopt will be, you have to avoid water stagnation in the field or uh, you have to avoid the moisture stress in the soil. And uh, next is you have to remove and also distract the crop residues, then uh, volunteer sunflower plant, which will reduce the disease and also pest severities. Then uh, you have to maintain one seedling per hill by taking a 10 to 15 days after germination. So these are all uh, that you have to uh, adopt when you are taking AESA, that is agro-based uh, ecosystem method. You can adopt all these. So next is uh, mechanical practice. That is you have to uh, maintain optimum plant population. Then you have to uh, hand pick and destroy this one. Then uh, you have to set up light trap, pheromone trap, and also bird purchase at uh, 20 per acre. Since birds also play an important, it is also an important predator to maintain the pest in the field. <coughs> so next, let's move on to the pest of safflor. So there are uh, four important pests of safflor. That is uh, gram pod borer or capsule borer. That is nothing but uh, helca or armigera. Then uh, safflor caterpillar, then uh, safflor aphid, capsule fly or safflor butterfly. So these are the four important pests that are going to affect this safflor first. Uh, let's see one by one. So gram pod borer, it is uh, the same, uh, same character. Uh, it will also be here, but here extra is that they will affect the perforated in involucral uh, bracket. That is... Uh, it is a green portion that you can see under the uh, any uh, uh, flowers or the, the uh, head. And uh, these uh, capitula, the, this capitula will be partially or uh, completely eaten in the bud stage by these uh, pests. And you can also see uh, you can also see that the capitula will be both. So it will affect the leaves, shoot apices, and also the uh, capitula. So next, it is the biology. So you know very well about the biology of the helicoverba because uh, continuously in uh, most of the major crops, we will be learning this helicoverba. So it is also a very important pitch. So you should uh, uh, know thoroughly about the biology damage and also the management of this pitch. So as it is a polyphagous pest, it is also known as a king of uh, insect pest. So next is the management. So that also, you know, uh, here uh, the extra is that you can go for uh, uh, growing of repellent, uh, repellent plants like uh, osimum or basil. Then as you know, there's uh, marigold. Marigold, it is an ovipositional uh, track crops. Then uh, you have to go for intercropping with uh, non-host crops like wheat or barley in order to reduce the incidence of season after season. 
and uh, here it is given that you have to avoid chickpea if you if you grow chickpea as intercrop then the damage will be doubled and the biological control you have to go for release of the trichogramma pretiosa at uh, 400 uh, 40000 per acre then you can go for spraying of this npv then uh, even entomo nematode uh, entomo pathogenic nematodes also you can release uh, so infective juveniles like uh, stainer rima uh, felchie per acre you have to release <coughs> So you know about the parasitoid and predators. So you have to grow plants that uh, that will attract these uh, natural enemies. That is, you have to maintain uh, a, uh, you ha you have to maintain the field in such a way that you have to attract or pull the natural enemy towards the field. So next it is uh, sapler caterpillar that is perigee uh, capensis. This also belongs to the belongs to the family Noctidae and order Lepidoptera. So if you see the damage symptom, these are first known to feed on the leaves and then uh, then later it used to feed on bracts, flowers and also capsule. So it is reported that they are known to cause yield loss of about 62 to 100 percentage uh, when there is excessive uh, feeding of this uh, uh, larvae. So this uh, safla, it is known to be a regular pest. That is, uh, it is known to occur uh, occur season after season, and uh, they are uh, this uh, insect also occurs throughout throughout uh, India. And uh, if you see the egg, the egg character, the egg it will be uh, green green in color, and a single female they can uh, lay about uh, more than uh, three hundred eggs. Then. It will be uh, laying singly or it can also lay in clusters on the crop foliage. So after four to five days, the larva will emerge and this larva, it will be stout, green and also will be smooth. Another peculiar character is that their anal segment, it will be humped. And the whole body, it has some purple mark markings. And uh, after two to three weeks, they are known to pupate and the pupation, it will take place in the soil. And this pupation, it will uh, last for about a week. So after that, the adults will emerge. And this adults, it will be brown, dark brown in color, as you can see here. And they will be having many wavy markings on the forelimbs. So for the uh, cultural practice, you can uh, go for the common uh, cultural and uh, mechanical factors. Especially, you have to avoid use of uh, high nitrogen fertilizers. Then. For this, you have also have to avoid the water logging. Then mechanical control, as I said, and as I discussed before, you need to write, you, you can uh, you can set up any of the mechanical factors like light trap, pheromone trap, bird purchase, etc. Then natural enemies. Here for natural enemies, uh, the Aphentellus, Rogues, then Euplectrus, Erivorus, Tiromalus are known to occur in the field of this safflow, which are effective against, which are known to parasite this uh, safflow caterpillar. Then uh, predators that are known to attack or uh, prey on this uh, safflow caterpillar is uh, lacewing, ladybug beetle, then uh, spider, redweed bug, red ant, robber fly, black drum go, then common miner, big eyed bug, earwake, then uh, ground beetle, pentatomid bark, plain mantis, almost most of the predators are known to uh, prey on this uh, pest. So next it is another important pest that is capsule fly or safla butterfly. So this, uh, the, the, the scientific name of this pest is Acantiophilus helianthi, which belongs to the family Tetritidae. So this is important question. They may ask in any of the competitive examination of this uh, family. And so, you know, tephritidae uh, means it belongs to the order Diptera. So these but they are known to affect the floral parts of the plant. So first, the newly hatched maggot, they will feed on the soft part, like uh, ovaries of the floret or thalamus of the capsula, uh, the capsula. Then later, they will feed on the soft part within this one. So the main thing is that once this uh, uh, 
uh, fly they infect the bud the bud seed will rot and it will start emitting an uh, offensive uh, offensive smelling fluid that is there will be a fluid ooze ooze out from the apices and the whole bud you can uh, you can see that the whole will uh, the whole bud will appear as if it is soaked so that is the important uh, damage that is the bud will rot it will give an offensive smell the fluid oozing out the, the fluid that oozing out will uh, produce an offensive smell and the bud will be so the buds will give an soaked appearance so next the biology so it is a tefri today so it is a fly and the adult fly it will lay the eggs in clusters of about uh, 6 to 24 uh, and they will hatch within a single day so after hatching uh, so after hatching the larvae the larvae will emerge and this larvae uh, they will pupate and the pupation it will takes place in the flower buds and the adult flies so as you can see here the adult fly it will be ash in color and they will be having light brown legs so these flies will be active during march that is during summer season they will be more active and the infestation of this flower buds it will take place after a week so after a week they emerge they will start infecting the flower buds so next is the cultural practice so here also you have to uh, adopt the common mechanical and cultural uh, practices that i discussed before so you have to uh, so that is an important part that is you have to uh, avoid chemical spray in most of the pests in order to enhance the parasitic activity so you know that before ipm is the one that we followed but uh, you know that the basis of ipm is etl but nowadays what we are following is aes method that is agro ecosystem based method so here the basis is not etl here we will uh, we the we will consider all the situation that is we will take uh, environmental factors we also include biological factor so it is based on the uh, overall observation of the farm so now nowadays uh, aesa is uh, gaining more important than the ipm uh, packages so next it is uh, natural enemies of uh, safflower fly or capsule bud fly so parasitoid uh, the parasitoid that are known to be effective to this uh, fly is uh, orimura species uritoma species and brecon species mm, then next it is uh, predators so this lays wing that is flies of perla lady bird bug beetle red bit bug then spider red ant drop of fly birds like black drum black drum go then common mina big eye bug then earw ground ground beetle pentatomid bug praying mantis every every one second one second i mean current is gone i don't have uh, charge in laptop so i will finish it off first so the last one it is safflower aphid that is uh, eurolucon carthami uh, here it is like uh, uh, aphididae you know that the family is aphididae and the order hemiptera so you know that these pests also known to suck the sap from the uh, shoot epigers pedangles leaves and also stem uh, such that you know that this is also an homotrend so they also excrete the uh, honeydew and this honeydew will uh, form secondary infestation like uh, sooty mold and this will hinder the acti photosynthetic activity so the infestation it will st uh, even start when the crop is 15 days old and the yield loss will be about 40 to 50 percentage and the infestation it may occurs even uh, 30 to 45 days old crop also the infestation may occur so the biology you know that in uh, aphid there are two morphological form that is alate and apterous form these alate forms are mostly formed when they when the host 
uh, when uh, when the the host plan it is not of that much quality or when there is crowding uh, they will form la type in order to swam from that particular host plant so the la it will be found in the beginning of the season and again towards the maturity of the crops while atrus form it will be abundantly abundantly formed during the two extreme condition so only during the extreme condition these uh, aphids will be forming the wing the type so you know that it will form asexual viviparous mode of uh, reproduction that is uh, there will be no zygote formation between sperm and uh, egg only uh, there will be only the sperm i mean only the egg that will produce the younger ones so uh, the nymphs it will be reddish brown in color and the nimble stage it will uh, have four in start and the adults the adults will be black in color it is a peculiar uh, character and uh, among all the aphid this is one of the largest aphid and uh, uh, on an average it is reported that a single aphid can lay up to 89 uh, offspring and as i said this is a black color with the pear shaped body and also they are having conspicuous cornicles at the fifth abdominal uh, segment so from this they will Uh, emit and defensive fluid and this uh, fluid it will be useful this fluid will be useful in uh, one second to protect themselves from the predators so management uh, so here what you have to do is once the attack if you observe the attack uh, in the border rows then you have to go for the control measure so these uh, uh, aphids they are also known to feed on the alternate host like parthenium bistrophorus so you should make sure that these are uh, these bees are removed from the main field through intercultural operations like harrowing and hoeing then you can go for intercropping with uh, sorghum wheat and also coriander then uh, another important thing is that you have to avoid niger as an intercropping so you can go for chrysoperla larvae so you know you know that uh, uh this uh, chrysoperla is all is a very effective uh, predator against uh, most of the aphids then you can go for neem oil uh, emulsion spray then nsk spray and also you can go for other synthetic uh, chemicals like acephate dimethoate then uh, quinol for the so on so that that's all for today's class so thank you shall i end the class or you if you have any doubt you can ask lavanya is it okay ah yes ma'am so okay. madam ibda uh, club id fsm fsm then hello uh, your voice is not clear ibda club id fsm and percent fsm and winle van okay सनफ्लवर् मेनेजेंट इंडा क्लोपीडम संति थर्टी एट पर्सेंट